Welcome to Climate Matters, the City of Santa Fe Sustainability Radio Show. Uh, today, I am joined by Porfirio Charveria, the City of Santa Fe Wildland Urban Interface Specialist. Good morning, Porfirio. Uh, good, mor good morning, Neil. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Yourself? Good. Thanks for, thanks for, oh, I'm doing well, Hi. yeah. Thanks for joining me to, to talk about wildfires and their connection to climate change. Um, really wanted to highlight that right now because there's a lot of big wildfires um, people have been hearing about in the news, um, you know, including some that have, uh, well, smaller wildfires that have been in our area lately. And you know, the connection to climate change, we've seen that that's doubled the number of large fires since 1984. And, you know, here in the West, projections are showing that an average annual 1% degree Celsius temperature increase could increase the burned area of each fire by 600% in some forests. So um, I'm sure that's something the Santa Fe Fire Department and the partners you work with as it relates to the wildland um, is uh, concerned about. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. You know, I'm thinking uh, that brings to mind that, that acreages aren't necessarily the best metric to be thinking about. I think we, in some cases, we want fire on the landscape. This this uh, landscape around Santa Fe is certainly adapted to fire. Ponderosa pine specifically really is fire dependent and, and really wants more fire and hasn't had a lot of fire in the last hundred years in and around Santa Fe. And that added with climate change, with higher temperatures, uh, longer droughts that we're experiencing, are just exasperate that deficit of not having fire on the landscape. So when you do have something that starts on a hot, dry, windy day, you get this uh, very intense uh, extreme fire behavior that that uh, does a whole lot of harm than than the good that it um, may have been intended to do, you know, or ha had may have done a hundred years ago. That's very interesting. Yeah, it's more of the um, intensity of it as opposed to the size of it that's uh, that's being exasperated by the changing climate. Um, well, maybe not as opposed to, but that's, you know, the intensity is, is very important to pay attention to. Once they're out of control, well, you know, so intense, there's nothing that firefighters can, can do, right? <laughs> yeah, when a fire burns uh, that intensely, you know, firefighters basically are backing off and what we're looking at is just protecting life and property and, and really trying to just get people out away from, from uh, an oncoming fire. So in lots of cases, uh, firefighters aren't even attacking the blaze, they're just focused on protecting the people that are out in front of that and trying to get them to a, a place that's safe. Right, well, that that's a... That's a good point. And we introduced you as the Wildland Urban Interface Specialist. Um, it's your job here at the City of Santa Fe. What is a Wildland Urban Interface? So my job is to work on forest fires for the fire departments, a structural fire department, EMS fire department. That's the majority, 90% of what the, the department does. And I, I have a small niche here with the City of Santa Fe Fire Department to, to work on where wildfires would enter the city of Santa Fe in, in properties and homes and try and work with homeowners to prevent that, work with our partners, such as the Environmental Services Division, within you know, other uh, departments in the city, some of our partners out uh, uh, beyond the city, like the Forest Service and uh, our state partners, state forestry, along with uh, nonprofits like the Forest Stewards Guild and the Nature Conservancy that are, are you know, advocating and working for, uh, working to um, make people aware of the fire, uh, fire danger and wildfire situation out there and really trying to create um, uh, fire adapted communities. That's good to hear about all those partners working together on that and so this this wildland urban interface is the area where uh, you know the parts of town where people are basically closer to the forest that's um did i get that right yeah yeah exactly that's you know right where where people are living within the woods so 
for the most part here in Santa Fe, it's on the east side of the city, kind of on the north near the opera, right in the foothills area. So for people in in that area, what what should they be thinking about? Um, you know, what's what are a few things they should be do, doing to be prepared for a potential forest fire? Well, think about how a fire would, you know, would affect them. Uh, there's really two ways. The most prominent way is embers are going to land around the property uh, if you have a large, large enough wildfire. And these embers can travel anywhere from like half a mile to maybe a mile and a half ahead of the main fire. And uh, embers can be, you know, you know, I've seen embers fly that far that were the size of your fist. Kind of think in your mind of, you know, a pine cone that's on fire or uh, some shreds of bark or or needles that are burning off these trees that are being lofted in the air by this, you know, this convection column that you see on the news. And then those are landing around your house. And, you know, on their own, they're probably not that bad. They're going to land and, and burn out. But what do they land on? Are they going to land on a wood pile? They're going to land uh, on a tree that's right next to your house. Are they going to land on uh, couch cushions or patio furniture, patio cushions that are, are outside? And is that going to start on fire? And if that that item starts on fire, is it going to start the rest of your house on fire? Uh, do you have open windows or or um, doors or vents or garage doors where embers could get enter the house? And what do they start on fire? You know, and kind of think about if someone was around your house flicking lighted matches at your house. Uh, that's the first thing to think about of how a fire might start your house on fire. The second thing is is the flames actually reaching the house, which is a little bit easier to mitigate. You can break up the continuity of that vegetation of the of the you know of your landscaping so that you can create breaks so that you know there's not continuous uh, vegetation leading up to your house or anything that's flammable that could lead straight up to your house. So if you're giving some fire breaks in there, and it's not much, maybe 10 feet, five feet, depending on what the fire would be doing at that place. And and uh, one of the things that we can do from the fire department standpoint is, you know, make an appointment with us. You can call me and I'll go out to your property and we'll walk around and we'll discuss those things of how a fire would start your house on fire and what we could, uh, what you can do to mitigate that risk or, or that event from happening. Uh, another thing to think about is if you did have a big fire, in say Santa Fe and, and around, what what are you going to do personally? You know, to protect yourself and your family. Uh, thinking about evacuating your your home. What are you going to take with you? How are you going to get out? What are you going to do? How how does that? Uh, how are you going to get those notifications? So, signing up for Alert Santa Fe is another uh, a good tool to have in your toolbox to to make some good decisions. Definitely. And what, and what exactly is Alert Santa Fe for people who aren't familiar with that? How can so they sign Alert up? Santa Fe, yeah. Alert Santa Fe is the, um, is the reverse 911 system for this, for the city and county of Santa Fe. It's also a smart 911 system. Essentially what it is, is uh, residents register and for, for this service called Alert Santa Fe, and you can put in your medical information in there. You can put in information about your pets, information about uh, your property, like if there's a gate, if it's locked, how to, you know how to uh, how can first responders get in, and so that when you call 911, that information pops up on the dispatcher screen, and they can better serve you. So if you have a medical emergency, maybe there's an accident outside with a vehicle or something. Uh, or if it's a wildfire, when you call them, that information will pop up on their screen. The other part of that Alert Santa Fe is it's also the, the city and county's emergency notification system. And that's how we would send out messages to, uh, to affected areas of a situation. Um, so if there was an evacuation order, we'd be, be using that system. And you can register your cell phone to receive voice messages, text messages. Uh, you can register an email to receive receive emails, as well as your your landline house phone to get voice messages on that. So it'll send it'll broadcast that message out to you so that you get those notifications uh, that there's an emergency in the area. 
Yeah, I've signed up for it. And I really like how you can go through and select what kind of notices you want. If you uh, if you don't want to be getting all the road closure or traffic notices, you can you know unselect that and just say you want to know about um, you know notifications related to emergencies. Um, so you know if someone's thinking about signing up for that, but they're concerned about getting too many text messages, you do have the ability to control that. Um, and I appreciate yes, that because I don't necessarily want every notice every time there's an accident on, on Cerritos or what have you. Um, just too much info yeah, coming yeah. into my phone, but I do want to know if, uh, if there's a forest fire or something more major I should, I should be aware of. And I also liked how I could put in um, information about my household and my pets, you know, so I, I put that I have a dog here. So if the, you know, fire department is responding to a structure fire here, they know, um, you know, and I'm, you know, unconscious or not here or what have you, they know that there's a dog. Yeah. And so yeah, there's a, good. yeah. So there's a number of things people can do if you live in the wildland urban interface to make sure you're prepared for fires. If you haven't done it yet, Porfirio mentioned contacting him for that fire assessment. Uh, how do they get in touch with you, Porfirio? So they can call my office. It's 955 3119, 955 3119. Or they can email me. My email is pn chavaria at santa fe nm.gov that's uh p n uh, like november c h a v a r r i a at santa fe nm.gov and uh you know let me know um give me an address and a phone number i'll contact you and we'll set up a date and i'll go out there and walk around the property with you that usually takes anywhere from a half hour to maybe an hour's worth of time to discuss the, the information, depending on what you have uh, going on or what questions you would like answered. And so those are all good things to, to think about. And, and uh, I can give you that information right then and there, and you can start taking action on your property. Great. And if you weren't uh, quick with a pen or you're driving right now, you can find that contact information on the City of Santa Fe website. Just look for the section called Wildland Fire Preparedness. Um, or if you just search the Internet for City of Santa Fe Fire Department, you can, you can find your way there uh, once you land on our page. So that's one thing people can do. And we were talking about, you know, keeping that space clear around your house, um, a term we, we call defensible space. Um, for people who aren't in the um, eastern part of, you know, northeastern part of town, Museum Hill and that whole area, should should they be concerned about defensible space around their residences? Well, I think you always want to be concerned about a fire anywhere because, you know, certainly you could have a structure fire somewhere. Uh, certainly uh, there could be any kind of ignition sources out and around the city, wherever you might be. There might be an empty lot nearby, or you may just have you know, things that are flammable in your yard. So thinking about what, you know, how a fire may start and trying to mitigate some of that, like uh, for the most part, if you're in the urban area, it's it's really just mowing the weeds down and keeping things short so that if you did have a fire in the grass or in the weeds, it wouldn't get, you know, the flames wouldn't be so high. Uh, thinking about that, think about it in, in those types of terms. And then just being aware about fire danger and, be uh, hot and dry, windy days, and and so uh, not um, not choosing to to do some welding project when it's hot, dry, and windy outside, or or thinking about uh, you know having that um, that little you know outdoor fire pit that you may have might be a good idea to make sure you you've got a shovel and some water nearby, or maybe a hose next to you so that. If something does go awry, you can you can turn that off pretty quickly, or or you know spray it down yourself while you're calling someone else is is calling nine one one to get some some more help. And you were talking about how far those embers can travel in the case of a forest fire. Um, you know something else I try to stay on top of it at my house is um, you know any needles that are you know on the roof or in the gutters like pine needles or any vegetative matter. You, know, you want to make sure you clean out your gutters and something that, you know, I've been, I've been working on being more fire ready recently. It's something that, uh, you know, I've always thought I should do and I pick up the guide for home fire preparedness and then it sits on my desk for a while. And I decided to actually go through it recently and a change I was actually able to make at my house is moving my firewood away from the wall. Um, 
just something simple that people may not think of is if that firewood happens to get a, a ember or if there's a you know grass fire etc outside and it's going to light right up against your wall you'd rather that happen away from your house um you know perhaps against the fence or or the wall if you have one right <laughs> yeah yeah with wood piles i always think of them as you know just a bonfire waiting to happen so where would i want my bonfire to be if i had a bonfire out and that's where i want to put my wood pile right. uh, certainly in the winter time i think you know, store a little bit of wood pile next to your house or, you know, under the porch where you need it. But always keep in mind that you don't need to store the entire wood pile right next to your house. Uh, and, uh, you know, just grab enough that you're going to need for the night or for, you know, for the for the day or so. Um, I, I think, uh, you know, really, if you look at, um, you know, at, at the material, you're talking about the Ready, Set, Go material or the Firewise guidelines. They they have these three major zones, and the first zone is you know your structure and five feet next to your zone, and really you don't want anything anything flammable in that zone. So kind of thinking it in those terms of not just vegetation, but hey, maybe you're you've got a, some uh, you know some cardboard boxes or something out there, or maybe you've got an old couch that you have sitting next to your house, or or it could be almost anything. Uh, that could start on fire. You want to think about that, maybe moving that away from your house. And then uh, looking out farther to that 30 foot zone, really you want vegetation there, but you want to break up the continuity of it. Maybe uh, take the lower limbs off the trees, about a third of the height of the tree and create space between the trees, maybe about 10 feet apart. And what that really is doing is slowing down the spread of the fire. So if the one tree's on fire, it's going to take a little while for the next tree to catch on fire. When they're really densely packed, uh, you know, fire can just move through the trees like they, you know, like it was on the ground. And so thinking about that in a way. And right. then um, the other thing to, you know, and then beyond 30 feet is out to 100 or 200 feet if you have the luxury of that amount of of time, uh, you know, amount of space is just creating space between the trees and and uh, trying to keep you know some of the vegetation that's in between mowed down so that fire is burning through it. it it's gonna, it's not gonna be able to go you know from tree to tree to tree. Very good to know. All good things. I I don't have any trees on my property. <laughs> to be concerned about that. <laughs> just have the gravel. Line. All those people on the. You know, east, northeast side of town, plenty of trees over there. Um, yeah. And if you're just tuning in, this is uh, this is Climate Matters. This is the City of Santa Fe monthly sustainability radio show brought to you by yours truly, Neil Denton. I'm the sustainability planner for the city in the Environmental Services Division. Uh, my guest today is Porfirio, Porfirio Chavaria. He's the Wildland Urban Interface Specialist in the Santa Fe Fire Department. And we're talking about um, how to be prepared for uh, forest fires. Um, and the things that come along with forest fires, such as smoke, which we actually actually haven't talked about yet. Um, what are some things people can do to be aware of uh, poor air quality days when there's smoke in the area? I know a couple weeks ago it was pretty hazy, I guess, from the Oregon, Idaho, and California fires. Um, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, do you have some recommendations? Yeah, certainly. I think... You know, visiting the the Santa Fe Fireshed.org website, there's some some information on smoke there. You know, wildfire smoke can be, uh, you know, can get pretty hazardous to your health, and we, you know, we've certainly experienced that here in Santa Fe. Experienced smoke as far away from, you know, as far away from, as as Alaska in some in some years. Uh, more recently, it's been Oregon and California and Idaho and Washington that have been, you know, having these massive fires, and that smoke actually ends up here. Uh, airnow.gov is a good resource to go to. It's the EPA's, the Environmental Protection Agency's uh, smoke website. It's called airnow.gov. And if you look under current fires, there's some links in there. You can actually find a map that shows you where the smoke is coming from and where all the fires are in the country are actually kind of on this side of the continent. And where that smoke is going and kind of see where it's coming from, how thick it is. Uh, they, they also display some of the air quality monitors on there. So you can kind of get uh, to get an idea of what the air quality is there. They also have a, an app now from airnow.gov for your smartphone that you can find. And it'll 
you know, you can give it to your location and it'll tell you what the air quality is around Santa Fe and what it's from. Is it from ozone? Is it from wildfire smoke? Is there some other event that's, you know, is it dust? Is there other information that's causing that? Uh, things to think about with smoke is really, you know, trying to protect your lungs and trying, and when it is smoky outside, it's good to stay indoors. Uh, HEPA filters are certainly uh, desirable. You know, those upright stand, uh, standing filters that, you know, are maybe like two and a half, three feet tall that you can have in your, your house to help clean the air out. Um, there's a few ideas on, on the Fireshed website about, uh, you know, you can create some, some uh, HEPA filters on your own if you're, if you're looking for a DIY kind of method. And there's just a lot of good information there on what to do about smoke and how to how to mitigate some of those risks from from it. I think I saw it might have been last year or a couple of years ago was the Santa Fe Fireshed Coalition um, giving out some HEPA filters for people with um, respiratory problems or something like that. Yeah, they do have a loan program, so you can you can uh, contact. Um, you know, they're on the website. There's a uh, information about the HEPA filter loan program. I think the Forest Stewards Guild is the one leading that up, and and they've been able to you know try and expand that program as best they can and and loan people some filters you know while the while the air quality is bad, uh, and also you know during um, when they know there's going to be a prescribed burn, they try and loan those out as well to folks that are really sensitive to uh, to smoke and maybe have health issues because of smoke or have health issues that smoke, you know, exasperates and, and uh, you know, causes more problems sometimes. Like if someone has asthma, for example. Yeah, yeah, or some other, you know, COPD or, or some other medical condition that, you know, smoke really, uh, you know, bothers them. Right. Well, we've been talking about the Santa Fe Fireshed Coalition. And early on in our discussion, you mentioned some partners, but um, why don't we talk? Why don't you tell the listeners what the Santa Fe Fireshed Coalition is, what it does? So, yeah. So the Santa Fe Fireshed Coalition is is a group of partners of you know agency partners, nonprofits, individuals, uh, businesses that have kind of agreed that you know, the area around Santa Fe is at uh, critical risk for wildfires and are working together to try and mitigate some of that risk. And, and trying to you know protect the citizens of Santa Fe and surrounding communities from a, a, a large major wildfire. And we're kind of thinking at the scale of a wild of, of these large wildfires like we've seen across the valley in in the Hamas uh, Mountains, like the Los Conchas fire uh, that happened about a decade ago now. That you know it burned what, 150,000 acres and uh, devastated several watersheds along the way. And and just I mean moved incredibly fast like 17 miles in the first operational period so it's just uh, amazing how hot and dry it was during that time and so the the fire shed area is from Gorietta all the way up to the ski basin and everything in between in the, thinking that if we had a major wildfire in that area everybody that's downstream is going to be uh, certainly affected not just Santa Fe but we're talking you know communities like Chupadero and uh, Canada de los Alamos, Glorieta, uh, uh, you know, Apache Ridge, La Barbaria, uh, Rio and Medio, Tsuki Village, just all, all the other surrounding communities that, you know, that come into Santa Fe to do their shopping and their recreating and, the, and their, um, you know, and just visiting and, and hanging out for the day. You know, all those communities are certainly going to be affected by if we had a large wildfire and, and trying to figure out how to prevent that and uh, create the, the forest, you know, give the forest some more resiliency to that fire. And some of that is involving, you know, prescribed burns and thinning, uh, information on prevention, like, uh, you know, letting people know how to put out a campfire so they don't start campfires or start wildfires in the forest, uh, in letting them know what forest service rules are. And, you know, about 60% of the the fire shed areas is on national forest land. And so uh, understanding what, what they can and cannot do out there and just being aware of, uh, of wildfires and issues so that uh, they take proper precautions and have just an awareness of what, uh, what a wildfire could do and how to, how to prevent one from even starting. Well, I'm glad you mentioned campfires because, you know, I'm, 
I'm a person who goes camping a lot and it always bothers me so much when when I see the news after Memorial Day weekend or what have you, all the unintended campfires that Forest Service has found because um, I know that can lead to closure of the forest. And um, as someone who likes to recreate in the forest, really want to avoid that, we can't. So um, what what are, do we currently, with all this rain we've been getting, have the um, fire restrictions in Santa Fe National Forest been lifted? Yeah, uh, yes. Uh, as far as I know, there aren't any restrictions on the Santa Fe National Forest. The Forest Service doesn't, I don't think has any restrictions uh, in the state anymore, uh, just because we've been getting so many, so much rain. So if you are out in the woods and you do have a campfire, you know, and you're camping, and you have a campfire, please be sure to, you know, kind of be sure to put that out where it's dead cold. Uh, yeah. means you put that, your hand on yeah, it. It's exactly. Cold. It's cold. You put your hand on it. It does not burn. So, uh, and which, you know, Take some jugs of water with you just to put out the campfire, or if you're in an area that you know that has, you know, that has water nearby, you know, have some containers so that w before you leave your campsite, you know, you put, you make sure you put that fire completely out, which it doesn't mean just water. You pour the water on there, get a shovel and dig some, put some dirt in it and stir it around so it's cold to the touch. Yeah, you need a shovel. When you're back into your camping trip. You got your tent. You got your sleeping bags. Got your water, your food, and and your shovel. Can't that's right. Can't forget that. Very important to get it put out right. So, uh, yeah. Thanks for reminding us all about the importance of that. You know, we're approaching the end of the show here, and I just want to go back over a few things. Um, we've been talking about the wildland urban interface in Santa Fe, where people live close to the forest or in the forest. And for those residents, they can get a um, fire assessment um, from Porfirio and his team. Um, and Porfirio, why don't you tell everyone how to reach you once again? Sure. Uh, the best way to get me is by phone at 505-955-3119. Uh, 955-3119. All right, great. And if you didn't get it this time, again, look for it on our website um, under the Wildland Fire Preparedness part of our website. And really what that fire assessment is about is, you know, just looking around your property, um, you know, making sure the vegetation or anything that would burn is not close to your property. And we also talked about the connectivity of trees and other vegetation, um, you know, making sure trees or bushes or whatever the vegetation is doesn't go right up to the other tree or the other bush. So, um, you know, might need to get out a chainsaw or, you know, work with a landscaping company to make that happen on your property. But if you haven't done it yet, uh, now is certainly the time to do it. <laughs> um, don't don't wait. Fire season is getting longer and more intense um, every year. And as, as you mentioned, we're, uh, is it accurate to say we're past due for a fire? Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, we, I mean, we've had a few around Santa Fe, but within the fire shit area, surprisingly, there hasn't been a major fire, thankfully. Thankfully, yes. And and we also have a resource on our website called the Ready, Set, Go um, Wildfire Action Plan that helps you determine what you, you should have ready to go in case of evacuation. And also, as Porfirio mentioned earlier, some steps you can take to you know prepare your property. So that's a good resource. I actually, uh, I looked through it recently and um, had most of the things I needed, but I ended up getting a a battery powered and crank powered FM radio so I can hear emergency broadcasts if the cell signals go down. That was one thing I didn't have in my repertoire. So just stuck that in the garage for a worst case scenario. I can have that and hear the emergency broadcast system. Yeah, I I mean, if for evacuations, certainly Ready, Set, Go is a great place to have resources to identify, oh, what should I take with me? What do I have? I always think of having a go kit so that you can have it right next to the door in the garage somewhere that you can just pick it up and put it in the car. Some of the things that you want to take with you aren't going to fit in there, right? Or they're not practical to have in there. So I always think about having just a checklist along with my go kit so that if I'm evacuating, I have these things that I need to do, these tasks that I need to go get. Like, oh, I'm going to go get my hard drives and make sure you get those important pictures and papers. Oh, I'm going to get, uh, you know, my kids uh, stuffed animals that they love and cherish that they've had for 10 years or more. And just all the stuff that I know I need to take with me, I'm going to, you know, I have this checklist that has those things on it. So 
So that, that reminds me, but then it also focuses me and I'm not wasting time, you know, panicking or running around the house trying to remember what I'm supposed to take or what I'm supposed to have or what I'm doing. I can go back to this checklist and back, okay, I need to get these things done. Uh, make sure all the windows are closed. You know, make sure those uh, patio cushions, I throw them inside or, or do something with them or, you know, those, those small things that you might forget in an emergency. I can go down that checklist and make sure I grab everything in a few minutes and, and then, uh, and then get out of the way. That's a good point. I like that idea. I don't have a checklist. Um, so that's the next step I need to take care of with the checklist there. Um, so that's it for our show today, everyone. This has been Climate Matters, the City of Santa Fe Sustainability Radio Show. Um, we're on the air every fourth Wednesday from 8.30 to 9 a.m. You can also find recordings of these shows on the City of Santa Fe Environmental Services Division website uh, if you want to come back and listen to what you heard today or, uh, or share it with a friend.